Hello, and welcome to our production of the Thanksgiving play by Larissa Fasthorse. We would like to take a moment to acknowledge our Native brothers and sisters and the land that we stand upon. Together, we acknowledge that we gather as Hope College on the traditional land of the Peoria, Potawatomi, Adawa, and Ojibwa peoples, past and present. We honor with gratitude the land itself and the people who have stewarded it throughout the generations. As a community, we recognize the ever-present systemic inequities that stem directly from past wrongdoings. We commit to respecting and reconciling this long history of injustice, as well as committing to be better stewards of this land that we inhabit. In an effort to prepare you for our production this evening, we feel it is important to share that this play contains satirical depictions of violence and culturally insensitive topics. Thank you. On the first day of Thanksgiving, the natives gave to me a pumpkin in a pumpkin patch. On the second day of Thanksgiving, the natives gave to me two turkey gobblers and a pumpkin in a pumpkin patch. On the third day of Thanksgiving, the natives gave to me three native headdresses, two turkey gobblers, and a pumpkin in a pumpkin patch. On the fourth day of Thanksgiving, the natives gave to me Four bows and arrows. Three native headdresses. Two turkey gobblers. And a pumpkin in a pumpkin patch. On the fifth day of Thanksgiving, the natives gave to me Five pairs of moccasins. Four bows and arrows. Three native headdresses. Two turkey gobblers. And a pumpkin in a pumpkin patch. On the sixth day of Thanksgiving, the natives gave to me Six native teepees, five pairs of moccasins, four bows and arrows, three native headdresses, two turkey gobblers, and a pumpkin in a pumpkin patch. On the seventh day of Thanksgiving, the natives gave to me seven native tom-toms, six native teepees, five pairs of moccasins. Four bows and arrows. Three native headdresses. Two turkey gobblers. And a pumpkin in a pumpkin patch. On the eighth day of Thanksgiving, the natives gave to me eight woven blankets. Seven native tom-toms. Six native teepees. Five pairs of moccasins. Four bows and arrows. Three native headdresses. Two turkey gobblers. And a pumpkin in a pumpkin patch. On the ninth day of Thanksgiving, the natives gave to me Nine cornucopias Eight woven blankets Seven native tom-toms Six native teepees Five, five pairs of moccasins Four bows and arrows Three native headdresses Two turkey gobblers And, and a pumpkin, pumpkin in a pumpkin patch Teacher's note, this song can do more than teach counting I divide my students into Indians and pilgrims so the Indians can practice sharing. Is this for me? Happy first day of rehearsal. Jackson, you didn't have to get me anything. I know this gig is important to you, so I want you to have something extra special. Oh, wow, it's great. It's a water bottle. Sure. It's made with recycled glass from broken windows and housing projects. No way, that's amazing. I know. Where did you find it? At the farmer's market. It's symbolic of the way we're going to create this play. We start with this pile of jagged facts and misguided governmental policies and historical stereotypes about race, then turn all that into something beautiful and dramatic and educational for the kids. It's perfect. Thank you for getting me this gig. I'm not going to screw it up. What's that? What's what? 
Is that soy cheese or coagulated cheese squeezed from a cow? Coagulated. <laughs> you know I'm a vegan ally, but I've come to realize I like cheese on my crackers. I already struggle with the holiday of death. If you're planning on the holiday of death as the title of our Thanksgiving play, you'll lose your job for sure. This is far more than a Thanksgiving play now. I got the Gender Equity and History Grant, the Excellence in Educational Theater Fellowship, a Municipal Arts Grant, and the Go Girls Scholastic Leadership Mentorship. I know parents. To get them back on your side, you need to kill a turkey. I'm a vegan. You're a teaching artist with a 300 parent petition to fire you. I am staying in the positive. This kind of talk isn't helping. Okay, sending you nothing but light. <sighs> Thank you. I have a surprise too. I also got that Native American Heritage Month Awareness Through Arts grant. Really? They gave me funding so I could hire a professional actor. Finally, thank and you. And I was able to bring the perfect one to town. She elevates the whole project. Professional actor right here. Technically, you volunteer for these school plays. I get paid for that show at the farmer's market. Yeah, but you do it on a street corner and you're paid in a coffee can. That is my official performance spot given to me by farmer's market security because they understand the importance of teaching about composting. Jackson, I value your work, but this woman is from Los Angeles. Here we go with Los Angeles again. It is not the center of the acting world. It kind of is. The commercial acting world. Be grateful you didn't make it there. It shows what kind of person you are. The kind of person who wasn't beautiful enough or sexy enough to compete? Don't let your head go there, Logan. Well, wait until you see this actor. She's so beautiful, so LA. What is beauty? A social construct? That we don't believe in. We value talent and art, not looks. You are a talented actress. Even better, I'm a director now. But I still let my past in LA color my present, don't I? You can't reach new lands until you let go of the shore. Or in this case, return to old lands. But as a more enlightened person, because of the journey to the other land, that was new, but is now old, and needs to be let go of. Exactly. I think I could be a mentor to this woman, help her recover from the false value placed on her sexuality because I've taken that journey. Show her how much more she can be. Thank you for that self-awareness. You're one of the most self-aware people I know. Since knowing you. I just do my best and hope to Buddha that my karma makes up for the rest of it. It's almost time for rehearsal. We should decouple. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Nothing but gender neutral actor director respect from here on. I'll get rid of the cheese. Uh, no, I can handle it. Am I in the right place for rehearsal? Welcome, Mr. Green. I'm Logan, the director and your fellow collaborator. <laughs> Please call me Caden. I'm only Mr. Green to my students. This is Jackson Smithton. Caden was generously assigned to us by the school district as our history specialist. You're at Lincoln Elementary, right? I assure you my studies in American history go deeper than the elementary school level. That's cool, bro. We met at the Let's Learn Science tour. I was playing Einstein. You had the student that threw up on my shoes. <laughs> Actually, we've met long before that. I I've been to Let's Learn Math and Let's Learn Geography and all of the rest of the Let's Learn tours. I don't think we played at Lincoln on the Let's Learn Math tour. I took a personal day and saw it at Washington Elementary. I I'm a huge fan of your work, and I've seen every show you've directed since you got to Jefferson High. The Iceman Cometh was made so much more relevant with 15-year-olds. I appreciate that. It didn't deserve to be shut down. 300 parents disagree. For now. I so appreciate your support, Kaden. Uh, I'm an amateur actor and writer on the side, so it, it is a real thrill to work with professionals like yourselves. That's awesome, man. Us professionals welcome you. Uh, I'm especially excited because the email said this is a devised piece, so uh, we're all contributing, right? Yes, but as the director, I have the final say in the construction. This is a dream come true for me. I'm going to rely on you quite a bit. History is not my strength. We're waiting for one more actor. Have some refreshments while I text her. Some cheese, Kaden? So sorry I'm late. My Uber app disappeared and the place where I'm staying has terrible reception and I couldn't find the internet password, so I had to take a bus. Have you ever taken a bus? It's impossible. I mean, literally, it is not possible. <laughs> I think the word you want is figuratively, not literally. What? But because you're here, so, so it's not literally impossible. It, it's a common mistake. Are you the director? No, I am. We met at your Skype audition. 
I thought you were the casting director. We don't have casting directors for elementary school shows. I'm the director. Director. Oh. I'm Alicia. Yes, I remember. I hired you. I'm Logan. This is Jackson and Caden. Where's my script? As my email said, we're devising this piece together. That's how I work. I'm an actress. We work as a team to come up with ideas, try them out, improv some scenes, then I put the connecting parts in and type it up. Look, can I come back when there's a script? I just got to town and have a hundred things to do. And then there's the bus, figuratively. But the bus itself is literal. The devising process is meant to empower the actors. Do I get paid extra for empowerment? No, but I want you to know that your voice is the most important one in this play. More important than mine. We could not do this without you. Really? really? Absolutely. And personally, I am here for you. Okay, I'll try it. Is this how you created all of your shows? It's been a dream of ours to get to do a fully devised educational play. It's the wave of the future in theater. I mean, actors in Sweden haven't touched a script in years. They're so far ahead of us. Ikea is in Sweden, right? Yes. I love Ikea. Me too. Everything in my apartment is Ikea, except my mattress and appliances and the toilet, <laughs> but everything else. We all got sucked in. But now we realize what a huge environmental disaster it is to ship boxed packages all across the world when we can buy local. Oh, yeah. Anyway, let's get started. Oh, I combed through all of my research from grad school and came up with some ideas, I did, did my homework. Let's start with your research then. Good drama is at its core truth. Um, I, I suggest we begin 4,000 years ago when the ancient northern Europeans joined the agricultural revolution and reaped their first organized harvest as farmers. In order to give thanks to the gods for this new way of life, they feasted with ceremonies. And thousands of years later, these ceremonies become known as the Modern Harvest Home Festival. I thought we're doing a Thanksgiving play. Uh, another option is to focus on the fact that this is a November play. Right, for Thanksgiving? For Native American Heritage Month. We're performing at something called the All School Turkey Trot, not the Buffalo TP Trot. It is not my place to tell you how to express yourself, but sound waves travel, you know. As our Native American compass, Alicia is allowed to say what she wants about it. Native American? I told you, we got that Heritage Month grant to hire the professional actor. You didn't say it was for a Native American actor. I thought it was implied. I am so sorry. It is truly an honor to work with you. I have always been drawn to your ways. You're a fan of my work? M more than a fan. I'm a devoted follower. That's sweet. I just opened a new Instagram account. You should follow that one too. I will. Uh, now is a good time to mention that in the interest of full disclosure, there are many factors, grants, and school board requirements that we need to fulfill with this piece including Thanksgiving. I'm a vegan, so that subject is especially sensitive for me. However, I want to lift up the acknowledgement that although my sensitivity regarding the slaughter of millions of animals, including 45 millions of turkeys, is valid, I am conscious of not allowing my personal issues to take up more space in the room than the justified anger of the native people around this idea of Thanksgiving and our post-colonial society. I want to make that crystal clear, especially for you, Alicia. Um, okay. If there's anything you want to say on the subject, please know we are holding that space for you. I'm good right here. Okay, then. This bit of research is great, Caden, and helps fulfill my Excellence in Education grant, but I wonder if the best place to start a 45-minute Thanksgiving play for elementary grades is 4,000 years ago. Yeah, America didn't even exist. <laughs> Better times. It makes me wonder if using the word of the conqueror, American, could be a trigger for people. What word do you prefer for naming this physical space? I've heard Turtle Island used a lot. Do you prefer that? I like turtles. Thank you for lifting up that awareness, Jackson. Coded language is an issue we need to be conscious of, especially when dealing with the gen next generation. I don't get codes. Because that's Navajo. Uh, my next idea is pretty cool. Harvest Home Festival is a direct line that can easily be drawn to our modern Thanksgiving celebration. Uh, see, 
I propose that we open on a huge bonfire with ancient na Northern European ancestors dancing and feasting on one side. And this is the exciting part. Ancient Native American people doing the exact same thing on the other side. I don't get it. Uh, of course, they weren't called Native American then. Uh, coded language. Thank you, Alicia. Uh, we show that, that both these cultures were already celebrating harvests on both sides of the Atlantic. Uh, two peoples on a parallel track for centuries before they collided as, as settlers and Wampanoags. History is so dynamic. I mean, it's really perfect for theater. Uh, yes, it is. I'm feeling your passion, and I love that, but here's the reality. It's just the three of you. Okay. And it's a school show, like all other ones you've seen, so fire won't fly. Then I'm not clear how you plan to depict anything, even up to the traditionally recognized Thanksgiving, since all of their lighting, cooking, and warmth was fire. We're going to have to imagine that part. But your email said we're going to do something revolutionary in educational theater. We're aiming for a revolution of ideas. So we open on the two civilizations having feasts on opposite sides of the imaginary fire. Uh, let's put that in the simmering pot for now. Uh, but to make it let's simmer. Let's move forward in history. What can we do to break down the myths and stereotypes of Thanksgiving in 45 minutes with three people? Create a revolution in their minds. 45 minutes seems kind of long. Well, it's a play, so actually it's quite short. But an average show at Disneyland is 20 minutes. That's what they think kids can handle. Um, we can consider that point of view, but I don't think that Disney If is anyone knows kids, it's Disneyland. It's like science to them. I know. I was the third understudy for Jasmine. Isn't she Middle Eastern? My look is super flexible. Oh, yeah. I totally get that. I hear you, Alicia, but the standard commission from this school district is for a 45-minute play, so we should probably trust that they know a little something about children, even though they do feed them slaughtered flesh and genetically enhanced garbage every day. I guess. Kaden, what can you tell us about the first recognized Thanksgiving in America? Oh, I imagine the third scene 3,500 years after the first. What year? 1565. That sounds close. In St. Augustine, Florida. The pilgrims landed in Florida? I did not know that. So that's why Disney World is there. Because it was the original crossroads of the world. <laughs> St. Augustine is a settlement of hundreds of Spanish people led by Pedro Menendez. I might be a little bit Spanish. Pera Espanol, o prima numero dos. <laughs> this Thanksgiving was a mass to celebrate a safe journey. Uh, Pedro ordered that the native people be fed as an act of goodwill. Uh, fun fact, because they just came from Puerto Rico, it is likely that there were tropical fruits at the first feast instead of yams and squash. So you want us to celebrate Native American Heritage Month with a play about Spanish people holding a Catholic mass and eating pineapples? <laughs> That's just one scene. The missionaries, Catholicism specifically, are difficult subjects for indigenous people. But it's true. Seriously? Can we jump ahead to New England? But the scene of the next recognized Thanksgiving happens 30 years later in Texas. OMG, the pilgrims were in Texas too? <laughs> <laughs> An expedition of 500 Spanish people crossed the desert from Mexico into Texas. Men, women, children, and animals died along the way. Finally, they made it to the Rio Grande. However, many of the people were so overcome with excitement to find water that they rushed into the river and drowned. <laughs> Gotta admit, did not see that coming. Those that remained gave thanks. Well, how is this appropriate for children? The local indigenous people joined them and caught fish for the feasting. From the Rio Grande? I assume so. Ew! People in El Paso still, st still celebrate that feast today uh, as the first Thanksgiving, only it's in April. Kaden, are we getting any closer to the normal Thanksgiving? The relatively happy one in November? <laughs> well, that's my next series of proposed scenes, though I warn you, there is drama galore. At least four different dates are vying for the privilege of being first, and the reasons behind the feasts are incredibly varied, from the gruesome uh, Worse to than eating fish that ate your drowned friends? Much worse. To speculation that the entire Thanksgiving story is a fiction concocted to celebrate the victory of capitalism over communism. So far, all of these stories are coming from the non-indigenous point of view. I think we need to hold space for the native perspective. That's my role. Uh, Alicia, what can you tell us about the first Thanksgiving in your family? Well, not much, really. I mean, we aren't religious or anything. Of course not. We just ate food and watched games. 
We didn't really talk about it much. Maybe we could do something with that. Use play as a universal way to connect with the kids instead of those tired children's songs we make them sing every year. What kinds of games? Well, just the ones everyone watches. Right. Is there any chance we could learn about these games with you as a cast? I guess. I, I think the Chiefs are playing Monday, right? There's a whole game just for Chiefs? That's amazing. How many are there? The same number as any team, I guess. I don't really know football that well. It was just on in the background. Wait, football? Sure, what do you watch? Uh, NFL football. Uh, well, not anymore. But. This is a perfect example of the exotification of your people. We assumed that you were watching Native American lacrosse or something instead of allowing you to be just contemporary people. Of course your family watched football. Whose didn't? Mine didn't. I can't believe we did that. Sorry, Alicia. Well, we did do one different thing on Thanksgiving. It came from my mom's people. Do you mind sharing it with us? Maybe we could get permission to incorporate it into the play, respectfully. First, we'd buy an extra frozen turkey, a small one, and leave it in the freezer. Then before dinner, all the kids would go out to the driveway and set up these wood blocks like bowling pins. Then we'd take turns rolling the frozen turkey at the pins and see who could knock down the most. Like bowling? With a frozen turkey. Yeah, that's what they called it. Frozen turkey bowling. It was hilarious. Your hands would be freezing, so you would just chuck the thing and it would go all over the driveway. <laughs> they call them butter balls, but really they are not shaped like balls. This is your family tradition? Well, my mom grew up in Iowa, so it probably worked better there because it was cold. In LA, it would start melting and get all mushy uh, oh and Oh my runny. God. Deep breaths. We want to honor your voice and your people's. I just realized I never asked who your people are. Um, you mean my family? What are they called? Well, my dad's side is the Longs and my mom is Hogan, but I use my middle name as my last name for acting. It makes it so I can play all kinds of people. Can I ask you something in all respect? I guess. Isn't that problematic? I mean, we're all becoming aware of red face. Doesn't it worry you to be playing other races? My agent had me take headshots as six different ethnic people, which got me many roles, such as Jasmine. How do you take headshots as ethnicities? What does that look like? Different hair, accessories. My Native American shot has me in braids and a turquoise necklace. Native Americans have to take Native American headshots? That seems wrong. Every actress in LA has different types of shots. My agent told me to. Well, I wouldn't do everything your agent says. Well, he's my former agent now, so I don't do anything he says. Besides, the Native Americans like invented turquoise, so I don't see why wearing it in a shot would piss them off. It's paying them respect. Them who? The Native Americans. But you're them. Who? Native American. I play Native American. You're not Native American? I'm English and French and a little Spanish, we think. <laughs> but I hired you to be the Native American. Yeah. And you aren't? No. But you were my cultural compass. Uh, you hired me to be an actress. Don't worry, I'm gonna act my ass off. Uh, but that is why your voice was so important. My voice is the most important, you said so. Because I thought you were Native American. Oh, so non-Native American voices aren't important? Didn't you wonder why we're asking your advice on all of this stuff? <laughs> because it's devised. But I need a Native American person for this play. I got a grant. Look, you hired me off my Native American headshot, so that's on you. You can't fire me because of this. It's a law. So we're four white people making a culturally sensitive first Thanksgiving play for Native American Heritage Month? Oh my goddess! Whatever. It's theater. We don't need actual Native Americans to tell a Native American story. I mean, none of us are actual pilgrims, are we? Well, interestingly, they didn't call themselves pilgrims at all. That's a name that was given to the them. The point but... is, we're actors. We act. That's the job. Is Lumiere a real candlestick? Actually, he kind of was. Was Grandmother Willow a real Willow? She's animated, so... In the Disneyland show? No. Exactly. And that whole Pocahontas cast was Filipino. We shared a green room. Do you have any non-Disney references in your life? I could lose my job over this. I, I don't think that Alicia playing native will be a problem with the school district. There are schools that are nearly all black, all Hispanic, 
If they tried to find ethnic-specific roles for everyone to play, they wouldn't be able to produce anything. I know about colorblind casting, Caden. I'm the drama teacher. There are grants at stake, a lot of them. And a petition? If I'm not a director or an educator, I'm nothing, Whoa. I'm... Stay in this moment. But this moment sucks. Take five. Four little turkeys standing in a row. First little turkey said, I don't want to grow. Second little turkey said, what do you know? Third little turkey said, Thanksgiving is near. Fourth little turkey said, that's what I hear. Then the four little turkeys that were standing in a row all said together, come on, let's go. Two little Indians fooling with the gun. One shot the other and then there was one. One little Indian left all alone. He went out and hanged himself and then there were none. Four fat turkeys sitting on the gate. The first one said, oh my, it's getting late. The second one said, Thanksgiving is our fate. The third one said, here comes the farmer with his gun. All said together, run, run, run. Teacher's comment. For fun, try having students sing Injun instead of Indian. My students loved it. So you just moved here? Yeah. <laughs> what part of town are you in? I don't know. I, I grew up here, so if there's anything you want to know about anything, I, I can probably tell you. Anything? A anything about this town. Oh. B but if there's anything else you want to know, I, I can probably look it up for you. I'm really good at research. <laughs> That's sweet. D d do you want my number or whatever? I don't know if I'll be here long. Don't like to count your chickens before they hatch, huh? I thought we're doing turkeys. <laughs> I've already screwed this up. We can fix it. I looked over your Native American Heritage Month grant, and it doesn't explicitly say you need to use it for a Native American person. Uh, really? As long as we do something that honors Native Americans for November, you're good to keep the money. But that doesn't seem right. Besides, I really wanted a Native American voice in this play. Didn't you check her enrollment card or something? It's illegal to ask about ethnic gender or religious identification in the hiring process, which I totally support. But it was pretty obvious that she's not Native. You thought she was? I could tell something was off. She's not centered enough. If it's so important to you, we can add a Native actor, a real one. None applied. I find it hard to believe there aren't any Native American actors around here. Have you ever seen one? I don't have the time or resources to go door to door to find one. Alicia cost a lot of money. It's harder to be a mentor to her than I thought it would be. She does have a ton of conventional beauty and sex appeal. Jackson! I'm not saying I'm into that, but she has a lot to overcome. It will take time. Despite all that, do you think we could still use her as Native American and call it colorblind casting? I think we could get away with it a few years ago, but now we're post the post-racial society. We can't be blind to differences. Right. Before we were blind to race, but now we totally see it. It's our duty as allies. Yes. And as allies, we need to say something for those who can't be here to speak for themselves. Or is it as allies we need to be sure they are here to speak for themselves? That's what I'm saying. So if they aren't here, does anyone speak for them? I don't think we're supposed to speak for anyone but ourselves. Right, so we just speak for white people. I think so. We see color, but we don't speak for it. Which means Alicia can't play Native American for sure? Definitely not. But can we really say that? I mean, then we're speaking for people who aren't even here. Maybe we should tell a Native American person and see if they say it. Yes, of course! But I don't know any Native Americans. A guy in my yoga class built a sweat lodge on his deck, so he probably knows a local Native American person. 
He made it totally traditional. That means he used dead animal skin to cover it, didn't he? Yes, but it's all upcycled leather from jackets he gets on Etsy. That helps. But your friend isn't Native American? No. He learned how to build it at Burning Man. But I'm sure he's had a Native American person to the lodge. Wait, <laughs> he's at a yoga retreat in Machu Picchu. No phones allowed. Well, then, I guess in the absence of any Native American people, we should make a decision for the good of the school board so that they don't get in trouble. Right. Then we're technically still speaking on behalf of white people because we're speaking for the school administration. Yes, that sounds right. We're white people speaking for white people. Okay. We can do that. Absolutely. <sighs> okay, we're back, people. I've been thinking, and I've decided that we cannot use non-Native American people to play Native American characters. So there won't be any Native Americans in the Thanksgiving play for Native American Month? It's the right thing to do. What part will I play? A pilgrim. But I'm maybe part Spanish, so I should have the biggest parts in the Florida and Texas stories. We aren't going to do those stories. Why not? Yes, why not? Well, there aren't any white people in them, and we've got a cast of white people. In this country, if you're part anything else, you're not white. It's a drop thing. If I'm Spanish, I'm not white, right? I think that depends on the region of origin. I'm not an expert on... I'll do the research and get back to you. The ethical thing to do is play what we know we are. But I was promised a large part. My gender equity and history grant requires a lead female historical figure, so that will be you. Good! This is a challenge, but we are the future of theater and education. Are we all in agreement? Support. Main pilgrim. Yes, Kaden. I'll defend you to the school board if I have to. Okay, then. No Native Americans in our Thanksgiving play. Let's start with an improv. We'll use the traditional story we all know. Just see where it goes. That story isn't necessarily historically accurate. We need to get our creative juices flowing and figure out what our options are to celebrate Native Americans without them. Let's act. Uh, which way is downstage? It doesn't matter in an improv. You just react. Let's put the audience here. You're at a pilgrim's house preparing the meal for the first Thanksgiving. I feel like it's my house. Fine. Let's leave the rest of the discoveries for the improv. Wait, didn't we get this food from Native American people? Yeah, isn't that like the whole point of Thanksgiving? To thank the Native people for saving us from... something with food? Starvation. We should totally thank them for that. Why are we fixing this food if it was a gift? The pilgrims must have done some of the actual preparation. But without any Native American people uh, to guide them? Actually... Uh, okay, you're sitting down to eat the dinner that has already been prepared. Would you like more stuffing? <laughs> stuffing is a modern dish, a more likely side, considering the efficiency of the early settlers would be a type of a sweetbreads or pate. Kaden, we call improv a world of yes. We don't judge or try to make sense of choices. We simply say yes and see where it leads us. So sorry. Um, yes. I, I would love some, what did you call it? Stuffing? I was mistaken. It's corn. Native American corn. Thank you. This meal is wonderful. Without our Native American neighbors in the next room, we would be dead. Yes, we owe them thanks. I thanked them. Good. We should say a prayer of thanksgiving. Public schools. What? We can't pray in public schools. Pilgrims are religious, right? Yes. Brother Jackson, would you say a prayer of thanks? Okay. Um, dear Father, shouldn't we wait to say the prayer until our native, um, brothers, what should we call them? Indigenous people? 
the truth is, in the writings from this time, they were referred to as savages. But we can't say that in a school show. Uh, we could call them the natives, as in they are native to this land. Okay, but my point was gonna be, we should have our native brothers in the room to say the Thanksgiving prayer. Yes, we should wait for them. More vegetables? Thank you. Uh, scene. We can't pray, and we can't do the hero scene without the hero. It's weird. Somehow, we need Indians. <gasps> A dream sequence. How does that help? My character can dream she's a native person, and I'll play me, because it's my dream. I think that's still Redface. I'm not native. I'm a pilgrim, dreaming native. It's totally different. Well, technically, she would still be in Redface. But we're not hiding that she's in Redface. It's meta, so maybe it's okay. I think so. Why are you the ones who get to decide everything? Well, as enlightened white allies, Jackson and I have put a lot of thought into these issues. Like every day of our lives, we can't escape our whiteness. But I play white. I can decide things too. <laughs> yeah, but I'm a straight white male. It's an endless minefield. I I'm straight too. <laughs> Funnily, uh, I am Italian, which used to be considered ethnic, but is, is now white. Whoa, this whole thing must be bringing up a bunch of sensitivity issues for you for being one of Christopher Columbus's bros. I'm not related to Columbus. But you have the awareness that your people started the slavery and genocide of millions? That's not all Columbus did. You're balancing karma. We uplift the celebration of Native American Heritage Month, and Columbus Day inches a little closer to oblivion. Well, C Columbus Day is actually a celebration of the contributions of Italians well, to then modern- Then why not Mussolini Day, or Focus, why not- Focus, people! The new idea on the table is that Alicia will dream she is Native American, thus allowing a Native point of view in the piece. Do we have consensus? I guess. Yes. You know what would be great? If it was like me talking to myself. Like, like Native me talking to Pilgrim me, helping me see the beauty and bounty of this land. So you're proposing that this whole section is just you? I can tell the other characters about my dream in the morning. <laughs> then it's just monologues. Some amazing plays are mostly monologues. Like the vagina monologues. As an elementary school teacher, I can say with authority that monologues put children to sleep. <laughs> Sorry. What we need is conflict. I was just Googling and things weren't so chill between the pilgrims and the Indians. I mean, obviously the pilgrims were land stealers, like Columbus, but they were totally in the middle of some very specific battles. So, you two can battle native me in my dream. Or, we can all be white people, pilgrims, preparing for a battle. War is intense. Kids dig that. I brought a dramatic post-battle scene that only involves white people, technically. Sweet. So we're celebrating violence? Maybe my character is conflicted about fighting the Indians. Good wife. I'm so conflicted about the impending war. Oh, let me soothe you, dear husband. Maybe she's your sister. Or your platonic friend. Oh, you're a couple? I did not get that. Uh, Jackson and I share a mutually respectful relationship. Oh, so you aren't a couple. <gasps> New plan. We're going to divide and conquer. Sorry. Alicia and I will work on her dream idea. Jackson and Caden work on the battle idea. Wait, isn't it inappropriate for us to split along gender lines? Oh, I'll work with Alicia. But is it more inappropriate for us to not intentionally split along gender lines? I don't know. But the impetus was creative interest, so I think it's okay. But two men doing all the war stuff? Isn't that playing into gender assumptions that we want to disrupt? But it's being period, so we're being historically accurate. Right. Yes. Sorry. No, thank you for always being conscious. Are there any... Props or costumes here? There's a few. The good stuff is out in the storage closet. Come on. Great. Alicia, I want to be sure there are no hard feelings in what just happened with the Native American casting red face thing. I don't blame you at all, and I hope you understand why we had to make that decision. 
You're the director. It's your show. Uh, no, it's our show, really. I want you to feel as empowered as possible. I've been a female actor in LA. You lived in LA? <sighs> For six weeks. My time in LA was hard, but since then, I've realized that it's not us as women, but the business that makes us believe in the lies of beauty and sex. But sex is a real thing. Oh, well, yes, but believing that your value is tied to your ability to portray sex and beauty is a lie. You don't think I'm beautiful? Well, yes, but in the way that society defines beauty and attaches worth to it. I realize now that my beauty is on the inside. We're all beautiful. Of course you are. You see my inner beauty? No. I mean, you're really pretty. You just hide it. But I could help you. It would only take some makeup to highlight your eyes and add some lift to your hair and you'd be gorgeous. <laughs> Not gorgeous. Sure. Change the cut of your clothes, add a hair flip, and Jackson won't be able to keep his hands off of you. I've never understood the hair flip. It's easy. You just flip. Yeah, you got it. It shows your neck, makes guys want to kiss it. <laughs> okay, enough hair flipping. What I wanted to tell you is that since LA, I quit acting because I realized I could be so much more. I'm a director so I can show off the power of my mind. I'm a teacher so I can change the future. I have plans, dreams. Jackson has helped keep me on that path and I want to put you on it too. My boyfriend helped me too. But then he dropped me from his agency, so I dropped him from my life and moved out. Good for you. I mean, if he's not getting me work, then he's not getting sex, right? Ooh, there it is. You should certainly never feel pressured into sex or like it's a commodity. Not unless I'm getting something good for it. Well, you've had sex, right? Well, yes, but you know what? As your employer, we shouldn't even be talking about this. Now. You're going to be a writer. You have so many more options for your future. Look, I'm not that smart. Don't say that. No, really, I'm not. I've been tested. But I know how to make people stare at me and not look away. And when I say something on stage, people listen and they believe me. But this history stuff and writing, I don't know how to do that. So if you want to make me feel empowered or whatever, just let me do what I know how to do. And don't force me to do something that makes me feel stupid. But I am here to help you, I teach you. I don't wanna learn. Seriously? I'm happy doing my thing. You have no ambition to be anything more than an actor? What's wrong with being an actress? Uh, nothing, I just, I don't believe I've ever met anyone without ambition. Not in any aspect of my life. I'm ambitious. I want to do more acting. Wow. You are certainly the most simple person I've ever met. I'm not smart, but I'm definitely not simple-minded. No, simplicity is difficult. Multitasking, constantly trying to be something more. Everybody does that. But to be simplicity, that's extremely difficult. I'm not really. I just don't do stuff I don't want to do and do the stuff I do. Wow. You are talking directly to me and I can barely wrap my brain around it. I've never for one moment in my life been content. I'm content all the time. Except when my boyfriend dropped me, but then I dumped him and felt fine. Oh, teach me how to be content. Right now? Please, you have no idea how stressed I am. <laughs> but if I can get my reputation back with the parents and they withdraw that petition, next year I could... See, I'm doing it already. I'm already worried about next year's production and we just started this one. Teach me how to be content in this moment I'm in. We are in, together. Well, basically, you don't do anything. That's it? Yeah, like if I'm in rehearsal and they're working on someone else's scene, I just sit there or play Angry Birds on my phone, but I forgot the charger and don't wanna wear down my battery. So, do you meditate or think about... What? Nothing. Sometimes I'll look out the window or I'll stare at the ceiling. <laughs> People leave you alone when you stare at the ceiling. 
Okay. So now we just do it. Right now? Uh-huh. So, do you count tiles or think nope. about? Just stare at it. Right. I can't turn my brain off. Maybe you're too smart to be content. I am smart. I've been tested too. I can tell. So, I can't be content? I've never seen a smart person that is. You're a lucky woman, Alicia. I think so. You're also wise. You're sure you're not Native American? Yep. Do you want me to work on my dream monologues? No, you don't have to write anything. Cool. I need a break. Keep doing Nothing. Got it. Logan, are there any swords in here? No. Period rifles? Nope. Ugh, we'll have to make do. Look it up, it's historical. Quit being so sensitive. But without the battle scene first... Trust me, I think the real impact is in the scene after the battle, back at the fort. Colony. The Pilgrim Palace. Well, actually, it was quite Spartan. <laughs> Seriously, man, you gotta loosen up on the facts. But facts are facts. They don't loosen or tighten, they just are. For now, we gotta zero in on a compelling story. Then we'll put all the facts in that you think we need, okay? Fine. You got a lot of scenes here. Thanks. Uh, playwriting is a secret dream of mine. <laughs> you told us that in like the first two minutes. You're the only ones that know. A and all of my students. Gotta give voice to your dreams. Speak your truth, and it will become truth. Well, I don't know that Facts it actually Facts kill works, dreams. So well. Do you know what I said I wanted to be when I grew up? An actor slash yoga dude. Like, teach yoga? Just be yoga. People thought that was crazy. It's not a real profession. But I said it anyway, and here I am. I act, and I do yoga. I spoke my truth, it became truth. That's seriously all you do? Those are my passions. You get paid for your passions? I have a day job, but that's not what's important in the story of me. Look. This homecoming scene of yours is the key. I don't think Logan will like it. It's a device piece. She doesn't have to like everything. Lo, we've got a scene that has me so stoked. Wow, that was fast, great. Cade's got like a whole play written. It just needs a little trimming and we could do it. Devising process done. But what about our input? I can work with whatever Alicia's got. Logan said I don't have to write anything. I'm being simplicity. Um. I'm supporting Alicia in staying with her strengths. She knows what she does well and I want to honor that. It's so brave, and zen, really. Jackson, she has absolutely no desire to be more. 
She's like you, but way further down the path because she doesn't have intellect in her way. Wait, like me? Free. You yoga and sometimes act and just live. Alicia just acts. Nothing else. I do do stuff sometimes. But you don't need to do stuff. I'm telling you, Jackson, it's genius. Only she's not. Uh, that's not being offensive. She's been tested. It's true. I had it all wrong. She is here to mentor us. Well, our scene is incredibly simplicity. It strikes at the core of the Native American gestalt with one visual. It's quite brilliant. Oh, thank you, Jackson. There's lots of clunky educational dialogue, but we'll fix that. Oh. <clears throat> the year is 1631. Upon landing in Cape Cod, the separatists, now known as pilgrims, immediately robbed the graves and nearly all the food stores of the local natives. However, with the help of Samoset, the English-speaking native who had escaped slavery, a tenuous treaty was drawn. But six years and many ships later, when the separatists discovered a white man dead on a boat in Plymouth, they assumed the native people had killed him. Major John Mason gathered his men and surrounded an unsuspecting Pequot village. They killed 400 native men, women, and children. Major Mason and his men came home to give thanks and celebrate their victory. Do not fear, good God-fearing folk. We have in short order laid waste to the savage villains. Prepare a feast most glorious and give thanks to God, for he hath delivered our resounding victory. I bring forth the trophies of our labor. Wait, are those heads? Native American heads. We shall give sport with the heads of our enemies on this day of thanks. Yes, we shall. Oh my God. I want to play. Don't touch that, Alicia. Frozen turkey bowling. people than kicking their heads a proper celebration of Native American Heritage Month. Well, it's true. And it gets a Native American presence into our play. It's like those programs in high school that make you visit a prison to stay out of prisons and see a crashed car to stay out of drunk driver cars and visit a morgue to stay out of morgues. This is appalling. But it's real. That's what we need. Not a cleansing of history, but an in-your-face reminder that this is what we're capable of or we will keep doing it. Exactly. If I do a gruesome play where you kick heads for sport, I will lose my job for sure. But the genocide on Turtle Island is ongoing. If we white people don't admit the horrors of what we did and are still doing, it won't stop. First off, this is a public school. The growing majority of these kids aren't white anyway. Second, petition or not, I will be fired. We aren't doing this. I'm the director. I've decided. Oh, uh, well, it's devised theater. Jackson, I've made it clear from the beginning that in this format, I will have the final yeah, say. Yeah, but I said you're no. being a bitch. Bit dictatorial about it. That is an incredibly offensive gender bias statement. I went by the pronoun they for a full year. I'm allowed one mistake. That wasn't a mistake. You've always been jealous of me because I'm a theater professional and you aren't. You teach high school You're theater. You're a street performer. I'm a local celebrity? Really? Actually, yes. But I believe that you, as a fellow human, are having difficulty with the inequity of our professional relationship and you are lashing out. Good girl. Dude. I, I am feeling a tension in, in my positional relationship to you. I'm sorry to have to call it out like that. Whoa. I think this is what less than feels like. I don't think of you as less than me. You called me a street performer. Well, you are. But if saying it in that tone offended you, then I'm sorry for the result you felt, even though that wasn't my intention. Oh, I think it was. It was. And that is a profound gift. Do you know how hard it is for a straight white male to feel less than in this world? I don't know that I've ever truly felt it in my life. I have. I don't want to lose this feeling. Say it again. Seriously? Please, help me, Lo. Uh, you're a street performer? 
Come on, give it to me. You're a street performer. If you care about me, hit me with You're it. You're a bad street performer. Yes. The school board said I didn't have to hire you, but you work for free. More. You're a terrible actor. Hurt me. And the sex is so bizarre. Back I mean, off. why do you? Too far. Sorry. I should go meditate on this feeling right now. Should we talk about it? <laughs> Maybe we all should meditate for a moment. Um, just keep doing nothing. Got it. Massachusetts, when Thanksgiving 1997, who the United American Indians of New England and the local police, what? since 1970, a national day of mourning has been observed with the march at noon. In 1997, police attempted to disband the march with tear gas and violent arrests. 25 people were arrested, many injured. Medical attention was not immediately provided to those under arrest. The police characterized the protesters as terrorists. 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 Who should be treated accordingly. Why? Have students write letters of apology to the Indians, then read them to each other. I've got it! Sorry, when you folks are done. I'm good. Whatever. Um. We'll start and Jackson can join us. I want to try a pilgrim-style Thanksgiving scene where we show the actual erasure of the native people graphically. I thought the scene with the heads was pretty graphic. Graphic in a visceral sense, not a visual one. We do a normal Thanksgiving scene, like, like normal, with Native people, but we play, we don't play Native people. We allow their absence to speak for them. Where is the missing Indigenous perspective? It's certainly missing from this room. We hold space for them by literally holding space for them. Give me a few minutes to work out some dialogue. Uh, I have a dinner scene I was holding on to. Uh, no death or Spaniards, just the normal story we all know. Let me see it. Wow, you actually wrote the whole play, didn't you? Well, there's nothing that means more to me in my life than this opportunity. Thanks for this work. All of it, Caden. Uh, here it is. Everyone take a break while I figure this out. Oh, that meditation was deep. I faced a lot about myself and my privilege. I, I don't know if I could hear my girlfriend say that kind of stuff about me and be okay with it. I know that her lashing out is not about her and me, but actually her double X's fighting back against centuries of patriarchal oppression. It's not personal. It felt personal for a second, which I totally needed. But intellectually, I know to filter anything that she says to me through layers of justified feminine rage. So, no matter what she says, you don't believe it? I believe she believes it. But I know to trust myself first. And <laughs> not everyone's ready for tantric, right? <laughs> you play oppressed characters a lot. How do you get in touch with that as a person of privilege? Well, I imagine I'm that character, so I feel what they feel. But do you use substitution technique from your own life or method or what? I pretend to be them. That's it? Yeah. And I can make myself cry on command. Like in a scene? No, right now. Whoa, that is impressive. I list it on my special skills. People ask me to do it in auditions all the time. I'm getting what Logan was saying about you. You're so simple. She called me simplicity? That's it. 
You should teach workshops. People would dig that. It seems like you either have simplicity or you don't. Smart people don't get it. I just tried with Logan and she couldn't do it. So I'm probably too smart? Maybe. He is for sure. I'm okay with that. But still, you could charge people money to come listen to you. That's what I do now. I'm an actress. You are blowing my mind. Seriously, mind blown. <laughs> no one's ever said that to me before. When I had my clothes on. I can't formulate a response that isn't not misogynistic. Simplicity. <sighs> okay, this is experimental, but that's what I love about theater for kids. You can really do anything and they will follow. We'll sit at the table of the first Thanksgiving. Our native friends are at the end. First time through, let's read all the lines. I'll read both Samoset and Massasoit. Good native king and good interpreter. Welcome on this day of the good Lord's Feast of Thanksgiving. What may I offer to make your visit pleasing? <clears throat> I, Samoset, whilst request more of the fowl your men gathered with their exploding sticks. Wouldst thou prefer the breast or the leg? Massasoit, which part of the bird is most pleasing to your countenance? <clears throat> that which is most succulent pleaseth me. The breast is ample, whilst the leg is moist. Good wife, we owe these men our gratitude a thousand times. Please, take the whole between you. Yes, we wouldst have died as did so many of our number. Scene! Great work, everyone! <laughs> Dude, are you okay? It, it just hit me. I read my words with real actors. This is the best day of my life. Most people go their whole lives without putting themselves out there. But you did it. I'm thrilled to facilitate this moment for you, Caden. I'd like to take a second to honor your emotional space. <sighs> and do it again. <clears throat> uh, it, it would help to hear it with some better acting this time. Uh, uh, I think some context of why you two are so grateful might help get the emotional arc. Not cool. Caden, it's customary that actors do not give each other notes. Any notes come through the director. <laughs> Just trying to be helpful. There was something missing last time. Want me to cry at the end? That would be great. Okay, fine. Let's try it again. This time, though, when we get to the native lines, I won't read them, but we will look at the space and listen as if the native characters are really there. But they aren't. Uh, we're pretending. Oh, I can do that. Good native king and good interpreter. Welcome on this day of the good Lord's Feast of Thanksgiving. What may I offer to make your visit pleasing? Stop. What is thou prefer, the breast or the leg? The breast is ample, whilst the leg is moist. <laughs> what? Ample breast. Moist legs. <laughs> <laughs> Only those with juvenile humor would find this pleasant exchange about food humorous. Our audience is all juveniles. Juvenile humor aside, I think it really worked. Notice how in the moments of silence we were all totally focused. It was so impactful. I felt that. But can we do a whole play like that? It's applicable to our contemporary situation. Erase presence. <laughs> Although the acting was great. It wasn't as strong for me as the first time with all of the lines. This is very early discovery. We're playing. D perhaps we could do it like a ventriloquist. It still keep the visual nothingness, but, but say their lines like this. I, Samoset, whilst request more of the fowl your men gathered with their exploding sticks. <laughs> exploding sticks? Caden, you horny man. You wrote a sex comedy. I did not. Please stop talking about sex. I'm simply naming what's in the room. This is a children's show. Caden wrote a sex comedy, and I, as a heteronormative male, recognize and honor the power of Alicia's sacral chakra. Oh yeah, I'll give you something to feast on. 
partake of my generous bounty, good sir. Let your rich sauces run down my chin. Whilst thou have me carve the brass. Wait, what? That's enough. <laughs> Caden, the voice takes away from the idea of erased presence. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't think that the erased presence works as well as the lines I wrote. He's right, Lo. The silence is wrong. Why are you fighting me? Uh, by silencing the native voices, we made them too strong. Silence is so powerful on stage. Our characters can't compete with that. But we want the silence to be strong. The nothingness of the natives is the whole point. So it's an inequality? Yes. Then are we being fair to the pilgrims? Uh, separatists. White people. Aren't we aiming for an equitable world, not a fair world? You've hit it right in the chakras. By doing this with the silenced voices, we're reinforcing the inequality of humans, calling out one human as more worthy of attention and power. But it's Native American Heritage Month, a particular time specified to lift up one people's voices over others. But do we believe in that? Or have we played right into a massive blind spot? If you give everyone a month, will it ever be fair? No, someone will always be left out or get a weird month like Hispanic Heritage Month. When's Hispanic Heritage Month? September 15th to October 15th. How is that even a month? Exactly. Well, it is 30 days. And it coincides with the Independence Days of several Latin American countries. Come on. How is it equal to give one group a mid-month as their month? There isn't a white person month. I checked. That's what I'm saying. Thank you, Alicia. Basically, every month is white person month. But once we are the minority again, will we get an official month? And will that make things right? No. The point is, this whole project is inherently inequitable. By raising up one voice through a month or silence, we are lowering another. That's not what we should be teaching children. I think we're getting off track. My idea is we that- We have a worksheet for this. To add up privilege so that we can then equalize it. What is privilege? The things about you that give you power. I'm hot. That's power, so that's privilege. Believing that your power is only because of your looks is buying into a subjective social construct. I haven't opened a door or paid for a drink since I was 16. Hotness is privilege. Uh, I, I think she's right. Although I respect your hotness, this talk will get my Go Girl Scholastic leadership funding pulled. <laughs> we can talk about your hotness at break, Alicia. Now, if we apply the worksheet to Logan's idea, the white people are visible. So that's one point. The native people have a month and silence. So that's two points. The story is written pretty evenly. So that's a point to both. See, the silence makes it unequal. So if one side is silent to make it equal, don't both sides have to be silent? She might be right. It's the definition of simplicity. No, no, it's not. It's the definition of madness. You can't have a silent play. Actually, it's been done. Uh, how will they hear my script? They were only going to hear the white half anyway. This would be closer to equal. Uh, what do we do? Uh, mime the story of the first Thanksgiving? Mimes are so rude. I think we just feel the words. I can do that. Fine, let's try it. No! Kaden, it's a fluid process. It doesn't mean we are abandoning script completely. Yes, it does. You've talked yourselves into this equality thing. I have written 62 plays for grown-ups, and this is the first one that has been read by actors over the age of nine. Do you have any idea how hard it is to labor over every line of historically correct language, then only hear them read by people who can't read three-syllable words? It's excruciating. This is finally my chance to have my words read by people who can spell theater. It's R-E, right? That is a very interesting debate that I'll tell you about later. Uh, but right now, I am not letting you take away my chance to have my words read by grown-ups. It's the right thing to do. Go, Alicia. I can't go back to third grade. I won't. Good native king and good interpreter. Shh, shh. Welcome on this day of the Respect the Thanksgiving. Respect the Shut it! Shut it. Is pleasing. Alicia, please, please stop, stop that! Don't push me, Caden! <laughs> Think that about the kids! You're uh, uh, more of the burger men's We are the Everyone, just stop doing anything! We've done it. This? In the middle of the room, 
Look at it. What? I don't see it. That is our place. I'm not following. Uh, the space in the middle. That perfectly equitable emptiness. I want to see. The room is the play? We've been trying too hard. The empty space is completely, finally equal. That is our Thanksgiving play. So, the entire play is nothingness. Oh, I see that. Four white people can't do a play about Thanksgiving that doesn't piss off the parents or the funders or the universe. So, we don't. Feel it for a moment. I feel it. It is something. This nothing breaks the cycle of lies, stereotypes, and inequalities. The parents can't object to that. It's brilliant, Lo. You did it. No, we did it. We all created this nothing together. So we're done. That's it. <laughs> One rehearsal. That's got to be a record. That's how us professionals roll. But I think I have a contract to act in a play. You and Jackson will still be credited as actors and collaborators. Katie will have an added credit of dramaturg. <gasps> dramaturg? The holy grail of American theater titles. What is that? No one knows. I still get paid for the rest of the rehearsals, right? Of course. Can we come back again tomorrow? We don't have to, but the space is here for us if we want it. We could work on the sex comedy. <gasps> I like that. As the director, I should technically be in the room. <laughs> uh, so, uh, same time tomorrow? I I'll bring pages. I'll be late. Just because... Because of the bus? Oh, right. That's I, why. I could give you a ride home and, and pick you up and give you a ride home again. Okay. Can you also write a play for me? I want to portray a better-known historical feminist woman like Carrie Bradshaw or Laura Croft or Shakira. Sure. Here you go. Thank you. Sex comedy tomorrow. Uh. Bye. S Bye. S see you guys. <laughs> Are we okay? Yeah. You've inspired me, Lo. Really. Thank you. That means a lot. This piece, the nothing, it's taught me that we need to do more of that. How can the play be more than nothing? Not the play. Us. We need to be less. Do less. That's the lesson. By doing nothing, we become part of the solution. But it has to start here, with us. Yes.